The test is divided into four sections. All the recordings are played once only. Section 1. Look at questions 1 to 4. Hello? Hi, is that Tanya? Yes, Simon. Lovely to hear you. How are you? Very well, and we're so looking forward to seeing you. So am I. Now, I don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid, so I wanted to make sure we've got all your details. Have you confirmed your flights? Yes, I'm definitely coming on the 22nd of June. Excellent. Have you got your flight number? Not with me, I'm afraid, but I promise I'll email it. Let me make a note of all this. Yes, do, because one of us will try to come and collect you from the airport, if we can. I presume you'll be coming into Terminal 1? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out which one it is. Yes, you must. <laughs> we don't want to be waiting at the wrong one. But hang on. I'll be arriving at about lunchtime, and that'll mean you have to take time off work to pick me up. You really mustn't do that. Look, we're not all that busy at work, and if there's a problem, I can text you when you arrive, and you can take a taxi. OK. There's a really good company called Pantera. Can you spell that? It's P-A-N-T-E-R-A. They have a stand at the airport. You can't miss it, and they're really reliable. Great, thanks. How far are you from the airport? About 40 minutes. And you're near the city centre, aren't you? We're east of it, actually. Uh, don't tell the driver city centre, because you'll really get caught up in traffic. OK, and I'll make sure I carry your address with me. Now, have you got my mobile, a uh, cell phone number? Yes, you sent it last month. But I tell you what, I don't think I've got yours. I'd better have it now, just in case. OK, and I changed it recently anyway. Ready? It's 07765-328-411. Look at questions 5 to 10. Thanks. Now, what should I pack? Well, all the usual. Casual clothes, mainly. Though you'd better bring an evening dress. We'll be having at least one fancy dinner in a hotel restaurant. OK, now, when you're coming, unfortunately, the weather is not going to be brilliant. I know. It's the rainy season. I'm bringing an umbrella. Uh, we have tons of those, so don't pack one. But pack a raincoat, a good one, because we'll try and get out for plenty of hikes. OK, sure. Sounds super. Just what I love. And I'd better remember to pack my sturdy walking shoes. Excellent idea. It's pretty rugged round here, so they have to be tough. I can imagine. I'm so looking forward to getting out. Oh, Simon, before I forget, you recommended I read a book about your area. Yeah. What was the name again? I'd like to read it, to get an idea of the history, etc. It's called Mountain Lives, and it's... Hang on, I'm just writing it down. OK. And it's by Rex Campbell. Great. I'll try and get hold of that. Well worth it. Now, the really important things are gifts. Oh, don't worry about that. Just bring yourself. I know. <laughs> But I'd like to get something for your parents. What about Janice? I know she loves English tea. Oh, that's very kind, but she's not drinking so much of that these days. But she'd love some chocolate. You know her favourite. Oh, yes. That'd be nice. I'll do that. And Alec, is he still into racing? <laughs> very much so. I was thinking of bringing a calendar, you know, with horse racing pictures. What a good idea. He'd love that. 
great. So that's about it, I think. Yes, I think so. So you'll send me your number again. You have some time to check your answers from 1 to 10. Section 2. Look at questions 11 to 16. Welcome to Canvas Park Podcast. In the next few minutes, I'll tell you a little about the park and the amazing things we have to offer. We like to think that Canvas offers more than other theme parks. Like them, we have a variety of exciting rides for people of all ages, but Canvas also places strong emphasis on the educational experience for its visitors. Not boring facts but lots of interactive exhibits. Although it's mainly an outdoor experience, we do have some indoor activities if the weather gets too dreadful. The park's got a lovely, well-established feel. Set in 80 acres of beautiful countryside, about three miles south of the tourist resort of Dulchester. The park was set up in 1997, by the Camber family, but then taken over by new owners in 2004, who have maintained the original vision of the Cambers. It has lots of old trees, hundreds of flower beds, and a gorgeous lake. Cambers has over 45 different rides, exhibits, and arcades. All but one of these is free once you've paid your entrance fee. We charge a small fee for our newest ride to reduce the length of the queues. You don't pay anything for parking. A family ticket for a family of four works out at about £8 per person, which is amazing value. Full details of current prices are shown on our website, along with full details of rides, etc., and directions for getting to us. We also have a number of special offers. For example, if you live locally, why not join our Adventurers Club, which entitles you to 50% off ticket prices all year round, and a special lane for all rides and exhibits, which means you don't have to wait to get into any part of the park. See the Offers tab on the website. We've recently added a number of new exhibits to the park, and we're particularly proud of our Future Farm Zone, which houses over 20 different species of animals, from chipmunks to dairy cows. The emphasis is on getting near to the animals. All of them can be petted, and you can buy food for feeding the animals. Many of our younger visitors say that this is the high point of their visit. And speaking of food, don't let the animals have all the fun. We have a total of seven different catering outlets on the site. We're open 10 to 5.30 all year round, and cold drinks and snacks can be bought at any time during opening hours. And hot food is available most of the day in the Hungry Horse Cafe from 11 until 5, just half an hour before closing time. Look at questions 17 to 20.
but we want all our visitors to have an exciting time when they come to the park. But our first priority must be safety. Parents and guardians know their children's behavior and capabilities, but here at the park, we have set certain conditions for each of the rides to ensure that all visitors get the maximum enjoyment out of the experience and feel secure at all times. There are four major rides at the park. Our newest ride is the River Adventure, which is designed to reproduce the experience of white water rafting. No amount of protective clothing would make any difference, so only go on this ride if you're prepared to get wet. Children under eight can go on this ride, but all under 16s must have an adult with them. Not all of our rides are designed for thrills and spills. Our Jungle Gym roller coaster is a gentler version of the classic Loop the Loop, specially created for whole family enjoyment, from the smallest children to elderly grandparents, suitable for all levels of disability and health conditions. Carriages have comfortable seating for up to eight people with safety belts for each passenger, which must be worn at all times. Sit back and enjoy the scenery. One of the best established and most popular of Camber's rides is the massive swoop slide. Whiz down the polished vertical slide nine meters in height and scream to your heart's content. There are no age or height restrictions. Be careful, though. You must have on long trousers so you won't get any speed burns. And then there's the famous Zip Go Kart Stadium with 16 carts, eight for single drivers and eight for kids preferring to ride along with mom, dad, or carer. Take part in high speed races in our specially designed Formula One style carts. But no bumping other carts, please. All riders must be above 1.2 meters because they have to be able to reach the pedals, even in the shared carts. Full details of all safety features are available on our website at www.canvaspark.com. So come and make a day of it at Canvas Theme Park. You have some time to check your answers from 11 to 20. Section 3. Look at questions 21 to 26. So, Brad, what did you think of the article on group work? Oh, hi, Helen. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, with helpful pieces of advice on how to make group work effective. I think we were lucky to be given such a straightforward text to present at the management skills seminar. Yeah. Actually, shall we discuss it now? Have you got time? Sure. It's only a 10 minute presentation. So, we just need to explain and then give our views on the main points raised in the article. I'll jot down some notes. Right. So, there are three main sections. I suggest we start with listening. Yeah, effective listening in groups, because it's not something that's frequently covered on courses in our field. No, and we should say that in the presentation. Yeah. And also, effective listening's pretty simple, you know. I don't think it's hard to learn. Well, people think it's easy, but in my experience, most of us tend to be very lazy listeners. Okay, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Something I do think we should emphasize is the power of the listener's posture, gestures, etc., in making speakers feel respected. Not that you're just waiting for them to finish before jumping in with your own ideas. Uh huh. Okay, right.、Uh, the next section is on goal setting. Let's make sure we're clear what the article says on this. Yeah. Well, firstly, it says that all group members must be given time to explain their own goals. That's it. Yeah. And then, did it say that the whole group should agree on common goals? That's a bit too strong. It's more that everyone's agendas should be equally acceptable. But it does say that goals have to be realistic. You know, achievable within a particular time. You've got it. That's really what the article's saying. There isn't really any point in having ideals if group members know they won't come to anything within a reasonable period. So I think a summary covering those points will be enough for that part of the presentation, don't you? Yeah. Now the last section is about conflict resolution. Actually, I thought it was the worst part of the article. Me too. I don't think it went into sufficient detail on the issue. Actually, I thought it devoted too much space to it, but that it was all rather boring, you know. It didn't mention some of the more radical theories. Absolutely, I found that really irritating. Right, and also I think it could have said more about conflict sometimes being healthy in groups. Absolutely, it just mentioned rather glibly about how we should avoid thinking of winners and losers, and that quick resolution of conflict is always desirable. Without explaining what these terms mean. Well, it gives quite detailed definitions, but doesn't develop a proper argument. Right. So for the presentation, I think we just give some definitions and and then explain what we felt were the weaknesses in the article's treatment of conflict resolution. Yeah. Good. Look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. So let's think about what we have to prepare for the actual presentation. Well, I suppose we'll use PowerPoint, but I'm hopeless at using it, especially if it has any visuals. I really have to look into doing a course on it because I know I'll need it in the future. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm quite happy using PowerPoint, and I'll put it together when everything else is ready. That's a relief. But yes, do that later. Okay. Now. I heard the tutor saying we have to include some well-chosen quotations from the article. I'm not sure if we do. I'll email him to find out. No need. I can just have a look at the specs he gave us when he set the task. That'll be quicker. But the tutor definitely said we have to prepare a handout to go with the talk. I'm not really sure how we do that. Sarah did one last year. Who's she? She's doing the same option as me on marketing. I'll ask her advice on what to include. Great. So that just leaves the bibliography at the end. I suppose it'll mainly be articles. Yeah. So we'll just look on the web, and we can leave that till later. But we've been advised against that. Well, we could have a look through some journals in the library. I think we should start by looking through module handbooks. I think that'll give us some good leads. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's all the topics. You have some time to check your answers from twenty-one to thirty. Section four. Look at questions thirty-one to forty.
I'd like you to give a warm welcome to our guest speaker today, Dr. Sophia Martin from the Faculty of Science. Dr. Martin is an expert in energy conservation, and she's going to talk to us about ways we can conserve energy in the home. This is a very important subject, as the world we live in is facing dramatic and potentially destructive climate change as a result of our excessive wastefulness and aggressive exploitation of natural resources. Thank you for the kind words, Alice. You are quite right. We face an unprecedented climate crisis, and it is up to each and every one of us to do our bit to help stop global warming. Believe it or not, if we all took some simple steps, we could dramatically reduce our carbon footprint and help protect the environment. It is not a cliché. It is not silly nonsense talk. One person really can make a difference, and I hope that after my speech today, you will understand how. But first, what exactly is your carbon footprint? Basically, it's how much you pollute the environment as an individual, or rather what volume of greenhouse gas is emitted into the atmosphere because of your day-to-day -day activities. The key to stopping global warming is for each of us to reduce our carbon footprint, and if we conserve energy in the home, we can achieve some truly dramatic results. Our homes are actually very inefficient from an energy conservation perspective. Indeed, more than 65% of all homes aren't insulated enough. This means that they lose heat and that homeowners waste a lot of energy, not to mention money, on heating during winter. So, the first step is to fit adequate insulation in the attic and outer walls of your home. This can reduce your heating bills by as much as 25%. What's more, the government offers grants to people who want to have their homes re-insulated, so it isn't a very expensive process, and you will probably recoup your investment within a couple of years. I would encourage everyone to consider this course of action. Both your wallet and the environment will thank you. Believe it or not, there are even simpler things we can do. For a start, never paint your interior walls in dark colours. Dark colours absorb heat. Therefore, you will waste more energy trying to keep your home warm. Always use light colours on interior walls. Did you know a dishwasher that is 50% full uses almost the same energy as one that is 90% full? The moral of the story is to wait until your dishwasher is packed before switching it on. It'll save you and the environment. The same is true of most household appliances, so try to use them only when necessary. Another startling fact is that replacing just one normal light bulb with an energy-efficient light bulb will save you £25 over the lifetime of the bulb. Now, just imagine the savings if you replaced all the bulbs in your house. Having large windows seems to be in fashion right now, yet it makes no sense whatsoever from an energy-saving perspective. Windows are one of the biggest causes of heat loss. If you have large windows at home, my advice would be to close the curtains and blinds as often as possible. This will help your rooms retain heat. Another simple way to retain heat is to close all inside doors, especially ones which lead into cooler parts of the house. Carpets and rugs are great floor insulators. It's a good idea to have these fitted in rooms where heat retention is an issue. I would strongly advise people to consider erecting solar panels on their roofs. You don't need to live in a constantly sunny place to reap the benefits of these. Even our English weather will suffice. Solar panels can generate enough energy to heat your entire hot water supply, which is fantastic when you think how much you pay for this service at the moment. And of course, I would encourage people to continue recycling and composting waste. The next generation will thank us if we act now, and rightfully condemn us for failing to. Well, I can only hope you have found this speech informative, 
and that I have highlighted the importance of the individual to the cause of environmental protection. Thank you for your attention. I'll hand you back to Alice now. Some time to check your answers from 31 to 40. In the IELTS exam, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.